guys have a bit of a resemblance to the WF-XB700 earbuds that I reviewed previously because they have the same frosted translucent lid on the case but these are even cheaper and I would say that they're actually a better option for most consumers. Hey guys, we have the Sony WF-C500 earbuds with us today and at 139 Singapore dollars or 99 US dollars, these are a really good option although some corners had to be cut to keep to the price. Before we get into the review, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. So let's talk design. You get plenty of plastic here. The entire case is plastic and Sony doesn't make any attempt to hide it. I have it in a mint green colour and the angles of the case is definitely something that's a bit more interesting, almost as if it's angled downwards ever so slightly to allow for better access to the earbuds. Not sure if it's just my imagination though. Unfortunately, the lid isn't held on magnetically. It's a spring lid, which is consistent with the more affordable offerings from Sony. There's no wireless charging here though, and on the case, there's only a USB-C port on the rear for charging, although there's a flat bottom which helps the case to stand up nicely. That being said, the magnets inside the case that are holding the earbuds in place is definitely very strong. Moving on to the earbuds, they're the same shade of mint as the case, and the faceplate here takes inspiration from the Sony WF-1000X Mark IV. That being said though, these are actually using physical buttons which, while they aren't touch controls, it's still nice because, well, you don't get any false inputs here. As for comfort, I actually find these more comfortable than the XB700. They're smaller, they sit securely and comfortably in the ear, and all in all, I really like the design. Moving on to the app though, you'll find that these still use the same Sony headphones app with software updates and the likes all being pushed through that. You get individual battery levels for the earbuds, which is nice, as well as Sony's excellent EQ feature, the setup for 360 reality audio, an option to choose if you want priority on a stable connection or sound quality, as well as the toggle for DSEE upscaling. Something to take note of though is that these earbuds don't have in-ear detection nor do they automatically turn off. There was one night where I came back pretty late, I left the earbuds out of the case on my table and I just went to sleep. And the next morning, um, I was thinking why couldn't I hear anything from my phone when I was watching videos and stuff. And I realized that it was because I had actually left the earbuds out of the case and they were still connected to my phone, which means that after like maybe like nine hours through the night, they were still alive. Of course, that's also because I actually paused the music from my phone directly before going to sleep, so they weren't playing music the entire night. But it's still really cool that they managed to stay in standby mode for like 9 hours-ish, and I was listening to them throughout the day, so it's like... Maybe they lasted around like, I don't know, 4, four hours of con constant use along with the 9 hours of standby time, which is definitely way more than I expected. But yeah, if you're the type of person to just take your earbuds out and leave them on the table, you will definitely want to make sure that you turn your music off manually. As mentioned earlier, no touch controls here. A single press on the left earbud raises the volume while a press and hold lowers the volume. On the right side, a single press controls play pause while a double press skips tracks forward and a triple press skips tracks backwards. A long press and hold pulls up the phone's voice assistant. My one big problem with these is when it comes to connectivity. These are still running on Bluetooth 5.0, which should theoretically be fine, but I did notice that I got a lot more stutters and dropouts with these than I would with other earbuds. While it's not terrible, it's not great either. There's only SBC and AAC support, but for this price point, I honestly didn't expect aptX. As for battery life, it's not too bad, as evidenced by what I said earlier. Sony claims 10 hours in the earbuds and an additional single charge in the case for a total of 20 hours. So like, I can't exactly say if the earbuds do last 10 hours of constant use, but hey, they did stay alive after that night, right? So yeah. There's also IPX4 water resistance, which means that they are perfectly fine to use for exercise and, and such, and I would say that they are usable for that use case because of how small they are. Mic quality isn't fantastic though. 
they are okay when you're in a quiet environment like this, but when you're out and about with, you know, traffic noise and such to contend with, they don't perform very well. When it comes to sound quality, Sony's mid-range slash affordable offerings will definitely not be on the top of anybody's list, but the thing is, they are always decent sounding for the price. These are well controlled and balanced with a good amount of bass. The mids are pretty well defined as well, and you do get a bit of a more subdued treble, but there's still enough detail there. I'm a big fan of Sony's bright EQ preset and I did find that that helped to breathe a bit more life into the upper registers. Soundstage is alright, it's nowhere as wide as it could be but it's still pretty decent. For 99 US, these aren't the most value for money product that you can find. There's no ANC, there's no wireless charging, there's no touch controls but the passive noise isolation is great, sound quality is pretty decent and if you're looking for something that's small and compact these fit the bill. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Sony WF-C500 earbuds. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to us and like this video. Till next one, see you guys!